One owner car guy, oneownercarguy.com. So you've got an old car sitting in your side yard and you don't know what to do with it. You're just gonna take some pictures and put it on Craigslist. You're an idiot. Don't do that. Clean it up a bit. Make that thing look as good as it can look. It ain't gonna look perfect. And as you can tell here on the car we got, we got fading and that stuff on the clear coat. There's dings here or there. I'm gonna give you a quick walk around to kind of look at what we got. This is a before. And this is a nice collectible car. I think it's a, is it a 40th anniversary? 35th, 30th, I don't know. Anniversary Thunderbird, how's that? That's all that says. I don't know the year on this one. I should know by the time I get the video ready, but comment down below, throw some comments in and any suggestions and stuff and things that you know of that you would do. But this is just a quick before of the video, before we actually get into doing it, doing it. And I'm gonna do this different where I actually tell you a little bit about what we're gonna do and how we're gonna attack this car. As you can see, we've got the floor mats out here already. I was getting them cleaned up. Now these are actual, the backs aren't anything special. They're just floor mats. The fronts are actually nice anniversary Thunderbird embossed, whatever you wanna say actually sewn in there format so it's very important to keep them nice as you can see the auction caused me some grief and damage by busting my arm it's all together still it rolls and all that but the test drive ain't going to be much of a test drive with this car right now this is a manual supercharged car and believe it or not it only has 15,000 original miles on it it's a beautiful car and with that said you've seen everything I believe I've got my befores. In case I don't, I'm gonna take one more here and tell you to add me on Instagram, instagram.com forward slash cereal marshmallows. And I'm gonna tell you real quick the process and why of what we're gonna do as we look over this car for the next couple minutes. First off, anytime you're doing a car like this, it's important to get it wet. And I don't mean that in just a way of getting it wet. A power wash is gonna be your best option. But you wanna start when you're washing them with engine, tires and wheels, undercarriage. All that should be done first, or else next thing you know, if you wash the paint first, buff it all out first, then all you're doing is blowing around the oil, grease, and grime from the underneath and the motor all over your freshly washed, freshly buffed car. And that's not gonna give you the outcome you want. These struts still work, this car is so clean. Um, I've gotta make sure I've got some befores of this, and I know I do, but, I'm just wanting, it's gonna make such a difference. All the plastic parts and everything on this car are like new. This is an amazing car. It makes me so happy to be power washing this and doing this car. So, let's start, get the undercarriage. We're gonna get the motor. And what you wanna do is wet it up a bit. Get that motor wet and then get your degreaser or whatever you're using on there and scrub the hell out of that thing. Just scrub the snot out of it. Scrub a dub dub. That's where most of the good looks is gonna come in. And the main thing with degreasing and stuff on motors and things like that is don't let it dry on you. Keep it wet. And that's with everything you do on the car from the first step to the last step washing, keep it wet. That's what she said. It just is a lot more fun that way. But if you keep it wet, it's not gonna dry out, leave streaks and marks and grime and stuff on the car. It's really easy at this point if you missed anything after you power wash all the grime off to actually look in a bit and get in here and clean some more stuff and spot treat some areas that you missed. Everything on a car like this should get power washed. Keeping careful of electronics and stuff, anything like that is very important to steer a little clear of. Anything on the fronts and stuff and around here, you should feel pretty confident about, but watch out for your plastic bottles because anything that's plastic and lighter plastic like this can blow right through. You don't really want to blow the stickers off your car. That's just common sense. And they can be a little loose, so be very careful. These kind of areas, just power wash the snot out of it. But that's a good instance there where you've probably got a loose hose here or an old hose maybe even from the way it's bulging. And it's just sometimes when you're scrubbing like this that you'll get to do a couple things that's nice upkeep for the car that's really easy to do. Or when you're selling it, you can be honest and upfront about it and tell them exactly what's wrong with the car. The more you can tell them about what's wrong with the car, the more the person's gonna be interested because it's obvious you're being honest about the car and telling them what's up. It's important. Um, so look at this, all the hood liner is just almost perfect. He's not even missing one of these. I don't think that I've seen a Thunderbird in this shape Minus the dirt and stinking clear coat burn. I'm not an idiot. Well, not really, but I do understand that. It's got what it's got, but watch it. Oh, goodness, it closes like new. So on something like this, 
Now you've got your motor done, you got your undercarriage done, you got your tires and wheels. You want to scrub the piss out of them. Get them now. Get them before you get to the next step. Every step you do, wash everything over again to keep all, like when you buff it, you're going to get wax on the tires and wheels. Let's power wash it again when you power wash the wax off. But let's back up. Done with the undercarriage. Done with the motor. Done with the wheels and tires. Now you would power wash the whole car. And do that by wetting the thing down a bit and getting about half of your car wet, nice and wet. And then you're going to want to come around and blow all your seams out. And I got videos on here showing that. I'll put some links. And right after this one, I'm going to put a video right to doing that on this car and actually putting a camera back over there somewhere and filming while we do it. But wet it down, let it set for a minute while you wet more of it up and just keep getting the car wet and then come back and really push in there and blow it out. Watch out for plastic pieces. You don't blow them apart. Get close gradually. Sure you don't blow something off your car. But really get in there and power wash the shit out of the thing. That's what you want to do. From that point, a regular wash, keeping it wet in front of you, keeping it wet behind you. You don't want it to dry in sections. You'd like to keep the whole car wet and then get it all dry at the same time if that was possible. It's actually not 100% possible all the time. You've always got to tie something in. But, as you can see, the auction treated me very badly on what they did to my car. Um, I actually want to show you, in this video, just because it's in this video, the stinking spare tire in this thing, because I never seen it like it. Now you can tell those seats shrunk up. It is 15,000 original miles, no pedals, no wear. And when you see this thing vacuumed out, you're not going to believe it. Back seats are in great shape, and as a matter of fact, they all pull down and everything very nicely. There's an extra wheel back there, which would fix the one that's got a scuff on it. Although there's not really nothing wrong with the scuff one. Okay, check out this spare. I'm telling you what, this is like a, a 19, not a 19 nothing, like a 2004 F450 wheel. Seriously, man, it's gotta be like an 18. Look at this. And this is a temporary use only spare. That's alloy. That is magnesium alloy, man. That's a nice wheel. Never seen nothing like that. And it's never been on the road. Little titties, little titties everywhere. Okay, that's that. Get your walk around to this thing. It's important when you're blasting the car out like this, don't fill the trunk with water, but pop the trunk and blow this crap out of the seams because you can never wipe this the way you can power wash this. It's easier to wipe up some excess water somewhere and do that kind of stuff immediately or else next thing you know, it sets and it causes a problem. When you power wash something like this, parts of this is just gonna roll right off there. That's all there is to it. And there ain't no need to keep it on there. If it's coming off, it's coming off. Blow that crap off there. You got clear coat here that's coming off? Blow it off. That's all there is to say about it. Um, we're gonna actually buff this car, do it to it. You can see you got problems in the bubbles in the tinting in there. And that's that. <laughs> if all of the seats looked like that, I'd be such a happy guy. But they don't. We've got a little bit of tears and stuff. As you see, it doesn't even look like anybody's ever grabbed that wheel before. It's absolutely amazing. Nice car. So, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I want to tell you about this, and I don't think so. After you blast it down that last time, and then you put a regular wash on the whole thing, dry it down, that's when you do your buffing, polishing, or whatever. First stage, second stage, and then a hand wipe third stage usually. Um, that's the deal. Um, from there, once you get done with your buffing and it's all buffed, you got to go back and power wash the thing again. You got to go wet the whole car down. Just get it all wet, wet, wet. I'd say wet half the car down. A third, okay? Wet a third of the car down. And then come back and really get into it, man, and blow any of the wax that you've got slung everywhere out of all the cracks and everything. It's so easy to do that stuff on the same day before the sun bakes it in. Also, these kind of lights, if you take like a um, 1500 and then like a 2500 or 3000 grit sandpaper and sand the heck out of them and then buff them back out with a high speed buffer, they'll look absolutely amazing. I can't wait to get this car done. It's amazing. Little things like this, it's just little, these things are usually rotted out and broken. The whole car is stinking faded, but that piece is almost perfect. This is a nice car. Things like this, you've got to make a choice what to do. Do you rip it all off? Do you rip part of it off? I probably will power wash about half of this off. And then who knows from that point. Okay, one owner car guy, oneownercarguy.com. We're gonna get ready and do this thing. 
Check out the other videos. I'll put links down at the end of it on a card. You'll just kind of click on it and it'll take you to the actual detailed videos of this car. And other than that, thanks for watching. Have a great day or night. Subscribe, like, and comment down below. Tell me something about something. We'll talk to you.